New Orleans is 300 years old. There is so much influence here. You talk about African, you talk about French, you talk about Spanish, you talk about British, German. There's so much stuff and it's all shown in the food, which excites me as a chef. My name is Nina Compton. I am the chef owner of Campella Pen and Buy What American Bistro here in New Orleans. I ended up in New Orleans because I was opening my first restaurant, Campella Pen. But I always wanted to live here because it reminded me so much of the Caribbean. So when I source ingredients, I try to look for the best. And that's not just about the ingredient itself, it's about the person as well, because I believe in creating that rapport where it's the excitement about food. My favorite farm, Paradigm Gardens, it's a dear friend of mine, Joel, who we have become great friends because he's so passionate about his vegetables. And he's, he's like, hey, Nina, I have these great, these great scotch bonnets, you gotta try them. One more thing I'm excited about. He'll drop off, you know, ginger or basil, like pounds of just, all this stuff. Now that we're in the fall, we can finally start doing root crops. So we got these radishes here. Nice. Uh, there's some carrots over there, some beets over there, some more radishes and turnips. And how long these peppers are just until? So these peppers all have year round. Most peppers okay. are perennial. It's just, if there's a freeze, it's a problem. Yeah, because I just want to know for my jerk sauce. <laughs> yeah, no, fair enough. So I should have them all year round. He's very involved in it. I think when people have their hands in it, it makes a better product. The food culture in New Orleans is, is so unique. There are a lot of food traditions here in New Orleans because there is so much culture here and so much history. It's not just the professional chefs, but it's also the home cooks. When you talk about a crawfish boil or a seafood boil or jambalaya, those are the things that the people make in their homes. And when they invite you, you definitely go to their house. We showcase all the local things, local crawfish, local shrimp, crab, and it's really about the seasons here. Morning, Chef. Morning, Ricky. Oh, those are nice. How are things? Very good. I have known Ricky for over five years now, and we've become such good friends. And, you know, when the pandemic hit, he says, Chef, if you need some shrimp for your house, I'll come by, I'll make a house delivery. And he did, you know? So when you have somebody that's just so fun, so charismatic about not just their, their product, but also their their relationship with people, I think, is very, just very special. Yeah, so I'm gonna marinate these in uh, rosemary and the scotch bonnets. The uh, scotch bonnets I got from uh, Joel at Paradigm Gardens. Nice. So I'm gonna marinate it for like two hours, throw them on the grill, and then uh, I'm gonna cook this baby up. Might have to it. make an appearance today. You should come by. <laughs> <laughs> make a little appearance today. You know where to find me. Uh, right, absolutely. Yeah. All, All right, right Ricky, thank All you. Right. You're welcome. So we're actually in my Russian by one American bistro and I live in the area, I live in by water. And what we're cooking here is just simple, approachable food. And that's the whole premise of it, a neighborhood restaurant where people can come three, four times a week, you know, sit at the bar, have a glass of wine, talk to their favorite bartender and have a meal and just feel so satisfied. When the pandemic hit, I kind of was forced to slow down a little bit and really rethink everything. But when I stepped back and I looked at everything, I said, you know what? If we're gonna reopen the restaurants, I wanna make sure I'm doing the right things that are safe for my guests, safe for my staff. But people want comfort. So I'm just gonna cut this strip loin to about one pound portions. And you can see the beautiful marbling here of this beef. And then heavily season my steaks. The way I approach beef is Simplicity. So something as simple as rosemary and garlic, a little bit of olive oil, and I'm good to go. Something like West Home that they take so much time in raising these cattle to be so supreme. Why not showcase that? Just cook it simply. The beauty of West Home beef is the way that they start the product. They're grass-fed for two years, they're traceable, and they actually own the genetics to the cattle. Wagyu beef, as we know, is the premium beef. West Home Wagyu, it's the next level up. It has a sweet, nutty butteriness that no other Wagyu has.
such a big piece of meat that it's actually going to keep on cooking when you pull it out. So you just have to let it rest and then it'll be hopefully the perfect medium rare. <laughs> Cheers. West Ham really stands apart from anybody else. It's almost like a fine wine. You know, not everybody can make a fine wine, but they definitely do at West Ham. <laughs>